Hello and welcome back to a new Rage Gaming video. My name is Hollow and today I have the exciting ability to talk to you about Mortal Shell, the new Souls-like releasing tomorrow. And with that Souls-like tag, we're in for a bit of a brutal experience as we're facing piles of enemies, traps and ambushes, and of course, some rather intense boss fights. A huge thank you to Cold Symmetry for the early copy of the game. We were 100% planning to cover this game on release, so this was an awesome surprise. Now, with the fact that this is a fairly unforgiving type of game, you might find yourself struggling as a new player, whether this is your first Souls like or not. In my time playing through the game, I realized a certain few things that would have made my life a lot easier if I knew them sooner. So just like I've done in past Dark Souls games and for Neo, I wanted to make a video dedicated to helping those new or struggling with some good advice I wish I'd known myself. Let's get started with my 10 tips to help you in Mortal Shell without any major spoilers at that. For number one, it's all about the hub of the game. After you make it out of the tutorial, you'll have a weapon and the first shell known as Haros. Upon stepping out into the world, you'll find yourself in the Fallgrim region. And if you're paying attention, you'll be directed to the big bell tower that I'll refer to as the Fulgrim Tower. Do not do anything other than head straight to this tower. This is a Souls-like game and with that we have some really good level design and freedom of choice. That freedom of choice totally lets you head straight to any of the other regions in the game and ultimately fight the big bad bosses without main mechanics like the parry and potentially upgrading your weapon or even your shell of choice. And that's exactly what I did and I gave myself a much harder time because of it even though I did manage it. So if you unlike me go straight to the tower from the beginning, you'll encounter the hub of the game. This is where you have access to the sister, who will unlock your new abilities or passives through your shell, acts as a checkpoint if you die. Not only that, but you'll find the crypt where shells are stored, so you can swap between them, and a weapon rack to swap between those two, and the workbench to upgrade your weapons. There's also a certain prisoner who gives you direction in the game, and while he's at it, he gives you the seal, which is what you use for parrying, which is extremely important, as you can spend resolve on successful parries to do big damage and recover health. And finally, on top of all of that, if you head around the back side of the tower and up the stairs next to the bell, you'll meet the merchant. Now, after you're done petting the cat, you can buy items from him in exchange for tar, the currency of the game. Mainly, you can buy food, those roasted rats, which heal you for 100 tar each. And you can buy these infinitely throughout the game, which gives you a reliable source of healing items that which you certainly need when compared to how absolutely starved I was for them. He also sells the acid for 2,500 tar, which can be used to upgrade your weapon all the way to plus five, which increases its damage. Obviously that's important. So if you attempt to explore the world before coming here, you're basically making things a lot harder for yourself, trust me, so just go there. Now let's talk some real combat advice and I'm gonna sneak three tips in here. Firstly, Mortal Shell makes use of combo attacks on every weapon. These combos can be high damage, but also provide unique attacks that might have extended range or stunning ability. The most common combos I use is probably the light, light, heavy. For most weapons, this gives you a sort of big finisher attack. And best of all, it will stagger enemies, which then lets you go even further and keep racking up the damage before they can even react. This can work on bosses, so that's really important. Alternatively though, I do find the light, heavy, light combos to usually provide an extended range attack quickly after the first light attack, which can catch enemies enemies that might be just out of range. I really recommend you experiment with the combos. Then we have the hard mechanic. Mortal Shell does not let you block by default, but it has added a very unique and honestly really good addition to the Souls-like genre that I've seen for combat. Harden lets you turn rock solid for a pretty reasonable amount of time, but also you can activate it literally whenever you're mid-combo and about to be hit. Harden. They stagger as they hit your rock body and then you punish them even further. Maybe you're leaping through the air, you can harden. Maybe you want to avoid a tick of fire damage. Maybe you just don't know when the next attack is coming and you're afraid, so you just harden and wait for a bit. It's such a versatile versatile ability and creates very satisfying gameplay. So don't sleep on it and experiment with it. It definitely feels weird at first, but it is so good once you get good with it. You can even do one of those long combos with that heavy finisher at the end, but before you're about to be hit during this combo, you can harden and then unleash that heavy attack. Now they've staggered, you can punish them even more. It's just so good for these combos. But finally, you can go even further by using the resolve abilities. Each weapon comes with two special abilities you unlock after finding the weapon cause required. These generally cost two resolve each and do massive single target or even AOE damage. Best of all though, because they're slow animations that would leave you too vulnerable to ever realistically use in combat, they've been given iframes. So you're totally immune to damage during these abilities. And you know what that means? You can combo into a harden 
into a combo, into resolvability, into a combo. This works on bosses and is incredible damage if you do pull it off. Now let's quickly explain resolve. Basically, you generate resolve through dealing damage using different consumables like the alcohol or other effects depending on what shell you're using. You spend resolve on any number of powerful abilities that often give you those iframes or huge damage or even health restore and more. Resolve in general is extremely powerful and a valued resource. So spending it incorrectly is a massive waste, but when you do max maximize its use correctly, you snowball fights in your favor like no other way can. It's not a complicated mechanic, but I want you to be aware of how strong this is. Okay, so next, weapons. Mortal Shell has five weapons. There's four melee and one range. I'm releasing a video on where to find these alongside the shells, so definitely check that out if you want help finding them, but it's gonna be a little spoilery, so I'm not putting it in this video. Just know for the weapon types, there's two heavy weapons through the Smoldering Mace and also the Batter's Blade, one medium weapon, which is the one you start with, the Hallowed Sword, and finally the light weapon, the Hammer and Chisel. Each of these weapons have slightly different pacing to their attacks, and with that, a pretty different play style with different combos. You can actually use any weapon with any shell, so you can feel free to experiment. But the point of this tip is to warn you not to waste your quenching acid on a weapon before you know which one you want to go with for most of the playthrough. Quenching acid is a rare resource you use to upgrade your weapon's damage all the way up to five upgrades, giving the weapon the plus five status. And as I said, the acid is semi-rare and you want to experiment before you spend it. Also, you unlock the weapon abilities by finding those different weapon cores, as I mentioned. So far, I found that every weapon core is in the area where you first get that weapon. So, where you found the smoldering mace is also going to be where you unlock its abilities. The first upgrade is always very close to the start of the new area, so make sure you look around. Next, the shells. Here's a quick word on how the shells function. Each shell has a set playstyle and build in mind. Haros, the first shell, is all about the hardening ability. He can make the cooldown shorter, he can gain stamina on successful hardened blocks, so on. Meanwhile, Solomon is all about building and spending resolve. He has less health and stamina compared to Haros by just a little bit, but he actually has more resolve total. And his upgrades let him build and spend more efficiently. Then we have Tiel, the rogue type shell, who is very agile with a shadow dashing which gives him better iframes on dodges. And you'll note that he has the smallest health pool and the largest stamina pool. Ideal for big combos and evasive movement, but his passive and abilities are actually all about poison, which is damage over time. He gains benefits whenever he poisons an enemy and is pretty resistant to poison himself too. And finally, the big boy shell, Eridrim, the heavy armor shell with the biggest health pool but the smallest stamina. His build is focused about isolated targets, which is really good for boss fights. And he's also great at staggering enemies while being pretty resistant to being knocked down himself. Clearly, Solomon and Harris are versatile and let you run whatever style you want to, while TL and Eridrim are more specific and kind of opposites to one another. Once again though, be sure to check out my video about the location of every shell and weapon if you do need some help finding those. Okay, so consumables. Really important in any Souls or Souls-like game, these provide big buffs and can be key to winning a boss fight or surviving a dire situation, which is why we all save our consumables for when we need them and then we look at all of our amazing consumables that we didn't use at any point because we just beat the final boss or maybe that's just me mortal shell has an interesting mechanic though in which every time you use an item you actually learn more about it when you max this out after using the item a whole bunch of times you master your understanding which unlocks new benefits this is great because it makes healing items heal you faster or grants even more resolve on some items use oh and the solomon shell has a passive upgrade that you can get that lets you become familiar with items even faster, which is ideal for leveling that up. Here's a couple early game items that you'll find out in the world that I think you'll need to know about. Firstly, the Welt Cap Mushrooms, the red ones, heal you for 30 health over 30 seconds, and as I've mentioned, these will heal you faster once you've maxed them out. Meanwhile, the Evil Green Mushrooms, the Tar Spores, they'll deal damage to you when you use them. 40 over 16 seconds, that's really dangerous. So be careful with these at first, but when you do max these out, they actually provide immunity to poison for two minutes. Pretty useful in certain places or as TL. The mortal token heals you after one successful hardened block. It's a strong burst heal itself and even stronger when you max this out. Moonshine or alcohol items give you resolve when you drink them, but the lower quality alcohol does a small amount of damage to you. When maxed out, you'll get more resolve whenever you drink these, which are great for boss fights. Most cooked items will give you health, but the boiled frogs actually give you faster stamina regen for three minutes at a time. This is another great boss fight 
consumable. Glimpse items provide glimpses. It's a currency used to unlock shells and certain trading, uh, improving your abilities or passives. The bigger the glimpse, the more glimpse rewarded. And this also goes the same for any tar item, the main currency used in trading. Consume these for tar. All right, so now for the new players, I want to give you a really specific build choice and my advice for you. If you're wanting to give yourself the easiest time as a new player and you're worried about struggling on bosses or progressing in certain tough areas, this is what I think you should go with. Pick Harros. He is the beginner shell, but also the safest thanks to how often you can harden and completely avoid damage with that. You can get through the entire game and do great with the Harros shell and the beginner Hallowed Sword, which means you could instantly upgrade that bad boy with the free acid you find in the starting area, so get the weapon to plus three, before you ever fight a single boss. And you can upgrade the Harris Shell for some incredible passive effects super early too. This is what I recommend. Firstly, the Endurance Perk, which is easily the most impactful upgrade to have at the beginning of the game. Basically, after you harden, you'll get a massive chunk of stamina returned to you, letting you pull off a big combo and have stamina to just keep swinging and be able to dodge out before anyone can even return fire. This perk is great for big burst combos, providing the stamina to just keep swinging. Secondly, and I think pretty obviously, the Resolve perk is incredible. It takes your hardened cooldown down by 25%. So the more time that you're spending immune with hardening, the more you can abuse combos, deal more damage, or just avoid death in general. Thirdly, and lastly, I want to mention Foresight. This is a passive that lets you heal a big chunk of health after you pick up a Glimpse. It doesn't always trigger, but you do pick these up often and other passives can cause these glimpses to drop even more, so giving you a better chance to get this heal. This heal can actually be vital when exploring a new area for the first time and maybe you're out of mushrooms or something. All right, one last tip for general direction. Since the level design is absolutely brilliant in Mortal Shell, you can go in any direction you want and like me, totally ignore the main hub and give yourself a really hard time. For an experienced player, this is great. You can do your speed runs and all that, but I want you to have an easier time as a new player with these tips. That's the point. So here's some quick direction for you. Your goal is to visit the three temples around the land and activate the checkpoint there and maybe get your hands on the different weapons and shells before you really start progressing. Because from here, you can pick a playstyle you like and then go ham on the upgrades. Swapping weapons and shells often means you don't have those useful passives and it also probably means you aren't really properly upgraded on a specific weapon. And even worse, you might not have the weapon abilities. So that just makes everything harder. So I'm strongly advised that you travel around and experiment until you know what you like and then lock in on something hard, some sort of build. So you've got good damage and you can build confidence in one playstyle. If you follow my new player build advice or go crazy with something like hammer and chisel or TL, just make sure you commit to something so you've got the best shot possible. Either way, those are my tips for you. I hope this helps you. And if it did, please hit like so more people can see this. If you do have any tips for a new player from your own experience with the game, then drop that in the comments. You might just help someone yourself. Souls like games obviously can be pretty brutal and not everyone's been playing them for years so if we can help some new players out i think we should for now i've been hollow you've been you and i will see you next time